What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So since the PlayStation 5 came out, it's been very difficult to find one, especially when it goes up with online retailers, it tends to just get sold out immediately as we have seen bots, resellers, and scalpers have a field day on eBay currently. Well, unfortunately it looks like things aren't gonna be getting much better as Sony did make some unfortunate quotes to analysts about the situation. We're gonna go over that here today. Also, we're gonna be talking about some big time sales numbers that were posted for new Pokemon Snap and the Switch, as well as some early sales indications around Resident Evil Village. Oh, and we are also gonna be talking about some unfortunate news for Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate and that DLC that we're looking at for the PS5. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna to start today with the Coalition and Gears of War. Or it does appear that Coalition will be moving to Unreal Engine 5 as they posted this up over on their website saying Gears of War has always been at the front of Unreal Engine development as a breakout 720p title for the Xbox 360 through last year's 120 FPS multiplayer update for Xbox Series X and S. And we're excited to continue that tradition by developing on Unreal Engine 5 for multiple new projects in the coming years. They go on to say shifting to a new engine is a big undertaking, so we want to be clear that we will not be announcing any new projects or titles for some time, pretty much letting everyone know, hey, don't expect our logo to pop up next month at E3. We're gonna be going into development and working with Unreal Engine 5 for probably a couple of years now. And what I'd like to see them attempt is a new IP, do something really cool and big with Unreal Engine 5. But I understand uh, un or Unreal Engine is, is something that they have become masters of at this point. As you look through Gears of War's history, it's always been a game that looks great on the hardware that it's on and it typically tends to punch above its weight when it's on those systems. So I do expect them to come out with something really cool looking at some point years from now, whether it is Gear 6 or hopefully maybe a new IP. We'll just have to wait and see what they have. Also, speaking of waiting, we've been waiting to see what's going on with Battlefield 6 for a little while now as we've had screenshots leak out and even now some video and audio of this apparent trailer that's kind of hanging out and waiting. But we do have uh, an official tease here from the Battlefield Twitter account, we can see this, where they say words that rhyme with soon, that'd be June and boom. So at this point, I think a lot of us are just looking towards a, some sort of EA play just ahead of E3 as they tend to do over the last couple of years. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they have to be part of E3. They can just say, hey, we're gonna have EA play on this day. Yeah, it's like two days before E3. So they kind of get lumped in with it, but they'll be able to, I, I guess, announce Battlefield on their own terms, which could mean they could have a teaser trailer go up ahead of EA play just to get people hyped up for a big battle Field 6 reveal, and then we get the big blowout event with gameplay and all of this. And it does sound like this Battlefield game is going to be a big time ambitious project for next generation console. So I'm really looking forward to see what they come up with here and it, the, I guess the kind of effects they can do, whether it's been rumored, dynamic like weather, day night cycles during these different maps. So it's exciting stuff and I'm really looking forward to see what they have for us. Oh, and in just a couple of weeks, we have that new Switch light coming out that is either blue or purple. At least that's been the debate online since it was first shown. What what exactly, what shade of, what shade of blue or purple is that? And now we're to the point where an Nintendo Minute is actually taking the Switch Lite and just held it up next to purple and blue objects. Seriously, they have this whole video and they put it next to Waluigi showing that it's not quite that kind of like deep purple, but then they also put it next to blue things. It's not quite that shade of blue. So it's still sort of this in-between look to a lot of people and the, the debate rages on. But what this has told me is this is probably the closest I'm going to get to a purple Switch Lite. So I might as well cut my losses and pick this one up, but it's out in a couple weeks on May 21st, so keep an eye out. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the PlayStation 5 supply constraints and the shortages that we're currently experiencing. Finding one, like I said, very difficult, unless you're willing to pay double, sometimes even triple, the amount online to different resellers. Well, Sony had some comments to analysts and Bloomberg had the report on this. We can head over here to Bloomberg's website where they say Sony Group Corp warned a group of analysts the PlayStation 5 will remain in short supply through 2022, suggesting the company will be constrained in its ability to boost sales targets for its latest game console. This, a quote from Chief Financial Officer Hiroki Totoki, 
at Sony saying, I don't think demand is calming down this year. And even if we secure a lot more devices and produce many more units of the PlayStation 5 next year, our supply wouldn't be able to catch up with demand. So what we're seeing now is Sony is saying we want to get at least ahead of what we produced for the PlayStation 4 in its like full first fiscal year. And they're looking at about 15 million PlayStation 5 systems. Now, could they sell 20? 25 million PlayStation 5s based on the demand they're seeing now? Yes, they probably could, but the problem they have right now is they just cannot produce that many. And a lot of that goes back to the current chip shortages that the industry is experiencing. So much so that Sony has really said, hey, we, we might redesign the PS5 in the system's first like year or something just to try to get maybe a better yield from these chips. Maybe shrinking the fabrication will make that process uh, of actually manufacturing things more efficient so that we get more of these chips. It's gotten to that point. And if they're talking about not having the ability to produce as many PlayStation 5 as they'd reasonably, reasonably like to uh, for 2022. I mean, they could be going into 2023 when they line up projections and still having an issue when it comes to supply. And that is where things become a problem for the PlayStation 5 generation overall. Like this generation for the PS5 and even, I mean, the Xbox Series X and S could be just extended because of this problem that we're running into initially. Because I don't know if they're gonna make up for this all of a sudden, let's say chips become available three years from now, like, I don't think they're gonna be like, all right, we're producing 50 million PS5s because that costs money to do that. And they're, they're just probably not able to do that many all at once. They more or less wanna do like 20, 25 and 30, you know, as demand and software continues to build up and they can align hardware with the software launches. So if we get to this point, they may say, well, this is just gonna be an eight to nine year generation because that's just kind of the way it is with supply constraints currently. And it will eventually affect things when it comes to software, if you consider that, because they could have games maybe become cross-gen because they just cannot get enough people over to the PS5. A lot of us are looking at that God of War logo that was shown and wondering, is this just gonna be a PS5 title or are they gonna feel the need to make it cross-gen because there's just not enough people with a PS5 out there? God of War would be used to push people to the PS5 if it's just a PS5 game, but how do you push people to a system you cannot like supply? And again, if it comes back to that component shortage, Sony's gonna have to figure something out and figure out something quick unless they just wanna to get to a point where they're saying, hey, we just, we cannot provide enough PS5s. It's just gonna be sold out for half this system's life. And like I said, that then becomes a problem for the generation. So here's hoping Sony is able to come to some kind of solution by 2023, I guess, at this point. Next up, let's talk about some of the Famitsu sales out of Japan. And sometimes these sales numbers seem to get out there a bit early. And it was very interesting to see this one because it is around new Pokemon Snap. And we haven't had a Pokemon Snap game since uh, 1999. And in fact, we will look at those sales charts here after we take a look at the current sales charts, which we'll head over to now with new Pokemon Snap at the top, 147,742. Jumping ahead of Monster Hunter Rise, which was still sold 102,000 copies, putting that above 2 million in Japan alone. So big things there for Monster Hunter Rise as it continues to roll along. And then we have Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury below that, 27,000 copies. On the PS4 side of things, near Replicant with 25,601 copies. R-Type Final 2 debuting with 8,693. And then we have Judgment with 3,383 copies. This appears to be the new price edition. And if we then go down to the PlayStation 5 section, we have Returnal. That debuted with 6,573 copies. And it's difficult to tell if that's good or bad. I, I am inclined to say that's not great, but remember the PS5 has not exactly been plentiful in Japan. I mean, we have seen smaller and smaller shipments go out to Japan. It almost feels like Sony is indeed moving away from that region, but still Returnal being a new IP and $70, I'm sure had some people hesitating. And the fact that it's a roguelike game, there's a lot of things kind of working against it when it comes to big time sales numbers. So we'll see really, I think how this game continues to sell and that'll tell the story there. And then we have Judgment at 2,881. Moving on to the hardware, the Nintendo Switch at the top 165,200 168, that is 
almost 60,000 more systems sold than the previous week. A lot of that I'm sure had to do with new Pokemon Snap debuting on Friday. And then we can see Lifetime, it is creeping up on that 20 million unit mark in Japan alone. So that is massive, massive stuff there for the Switch. The PlayStation 5 saw a nice boost too of over 10,000 units from the previous week coming in at 30,973. And the PS5 is slowly working up towards that 1 million mark in terms of units sold there in Japan. The PlayStation 4 just had a, a pretty sizable jump there for being a system that Sony is uh, obviously working to slowly discontinue here at 1,736. And that most likely has to do with near replicant. The 3DS holding steady at 543. And the Xbox Series systems did have a jump of just over 400 units up to 512. So overall, big time sales there for the Switch and new Pokemon Snap. Like I said, we'll see what happens there with Returnal as we go along. But let's take a look at what happened in 1999 when Pokemon Snap released on the Nintendo 64. We'll take a look at this sales chart here. This from IGN back uh, in 1999 when it was originally posted. And at the top, we can see Unjammer Lammy on the original PlayStation at the top. Densha they go to uh, on the PlayStation. These sales charts, by the way, look way different than what we get now. Uh, Chocobo Racing at number three. And there we have it, Pokemon Snap on the Nintendo 64 debuting at number four. To keep going here, Gallop Racer 3, then Final Fantasy 8, Million Classic, Final Fantasy Collection. There's Super Smash Bros, which I believe came out in January, so a couple months prior to this at number nine. And then Monster Farm 2 at number 10. Yeah, it was a different time back in uh, 1999 when Unjammer Lammy is topping the charts. But I thought it'd be fun to look back on those days when Pokemon Snap came out. And now here we are in 2021, finally getting that sequel moving up to number one on the sales chart. So overall, pretty good week for the Switch and new Pokemon Snap. And we'll just kind of keep an eye on Returnal as we go along. Next up, we're going to shift over to the UK sales charts. We've had some early sales numbers for Resident Evil Village with the chart we can see at the top. Resident Evil Village was number one. And then we have new Pokemon Snap at two, FIFA 21 at three, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at four, Animal Crossing New Horizons on at five, Minecraft on Switch at six, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury at seven, Grand Theft Auto at eight. I, I assume that's Grand Theft Auto five at eight, Ring Fit Adventure at nine, and then Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War at 10. According to GamesIndustry.biz, the horror game is the second biggest box launch of the year behind Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. 49% of its sales were on the PS5, 31% on PS4, and 20% on the Xbox. So certainly a, 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 I guess, sales that were more dominant in terms of box copies sold on the PlayStation side. But going a bit further here, pointing out how it did compared to previous Resident Evil games, as the sales are down over 25% compared with the launch of Resident Evil 2 Remake that was released 2019, and almost 40% down compared with 2017's Resident Evil 7. It did sell better than last year's Resident Evil 3 Remake with launch sales 76% higher. And I mostly look at this because this is tracking physical sales as more or less the rise of digital sales. And it's tough to look back when we're just talking about physical and not also including digital to make these kind of comparisons because especially last year, digital sales had a massive rise overall. And I kind of feel like people got used to that convenience of not necessarily having to go out and buy a physical copy. And it has, I think, accelerated the growth towards the all digital future. But having something like Resident Evil Village compared to like, like Resident Evil 2 Remake. There are still people who are like on the fence of first person uh, Resident Evil anyway, but then comparing it to, uh, to Resident Evil uh, 7 in 2017, when did or physical was definitely on, more on par with digital than it is now it is tough, but it does look like Resident Evil Village is at least rolling along this year, just behind Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. So we'll see what other sales numbers we get when it comes to the MPD later on. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate. It is coming out next month and it's gonna be the PS5 version that also comes with DLC, that being the whole quest and, and story line with Yuffie being uh, introduced. That'd be pretty cool to see, but there was some news coming out around that DLC and how it would be included with Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate. Cause remember, they're gonna have a PS5 boxed copy of this game. And I think a lot of people were assuming, oh, the DLC will just be on the disc itself because they are pressing and creating a new disc that they're gonna then sell. Turns out that is not the case. We can actually head over here to Twitter. This is from Lance McDonald saying, despite Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate 
on PS5 being a dedicated new UHD disc pressing, Square Enix have, or have said that the new Eufy add-on content must be redeemed as a once-off code supplied inside the box, even on PS5. Garbage, I don't know why Square keeps doing this. This referring over to EB Games, we're at the bottom here. These are um, kind of their, their, I guess there's their fine print. It says the new episode featuring Yuffie will be a code supplied in the box. And why is this frustrating? Well, they are pressing a new disc. You figure they would just put that DLC on the disc for a $70 game rather than basically put the copy of Final Fantasy VII Remake, I guess with the new update already on the disc. We'll, we'll see day one when that comes out if they didn't just take Final Fantasy VII Remake and press it with a PS5 disc and then, oh wait, you still have to download the update when you pop it in your PS5. But not putting that DLC on the disc is unfortunate because that means as they say here, it is locked to your system. It's DRM technically with a code that you have to go to the shop or through PlayStation and download. It's it's weird because we do see game of the year games, for example, come out that has like all the DLC included on the disc. And this is something they obviously could have included on the disc, but they don't want to do that because they know if it is a used copy, you still have to then go and buy the DLC. They have done this in the past with other games like Nier, uh, and it's just kind of the way Square is rolling along here, and it doesn't necessarily surprise me because of the way that the industry is going, again, towards that all digital future. And I'll admit, I was thinking about buying Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate if it had the DLC on the disc, but I guess at this point, I'm gonna have that free update with, with the copy that I have physically, and then I, I'll just buy the DLC separate with Yuffie to play through that storyline. I'm still looking forward to it, but uh, it's, it is a shame. We are heading towards that all digital future, something I've been talking about for a little while now. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're taking a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, have you had any luck finding a PS5 at retail price? 27% of you said, yes, I was able to get one online. 26% of you said, no, they keep selling out too fast. And then 47% of you said, I'm not interested in buying a PS5 right now. And I'm not necessarily surprised about the, I'm not interested in buying a PS5 right now, because I feel like even the 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 situation we're going through right now with resellers, scalpers, all this online, maybe Maybe have just turned people away from even wanting to get a PS5. So like, I don't even feel like going through the headache. You know what? When it shows back up in stores and I can just walk in and buy one, that's when I'll get the PS5. And hey, I think that will happen someday, but it's not going to happen anytime soon, according to Sony. And I feel like revisiting this topic will be worth it through a poll after the summer when we assume Sony's gonna have another event like a state of play and starts just showing more games because as they show more and more games for the PS5, I think obviously there'll be more and more interest in trying to get one. Games like Returnal I've noticed online and Demon's Souls hasn't really been pushing that many people to want to get a PS5. They're waiting for Ratchet and Clank, a God of War, a Horizon, and maybe some other things to be shown before they go, okay, well now I gotta try to find one. And we'll finish up with a comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Cooper saying, if they don't reveal the Switch Pro at E3, I'm gonna be done with this whole mess. And I have some bad news for you. I don't expect Nintendo to announce any kind of Switch Pro revision, new Nintendo Switch at E3. If they wanna do it, it'll be on its own, similar to like when the Switch Lite was revealed. There was just a trailer in the morning, boom, Switch Lite coming out later on this year. Make sure you check it out, right? The E3, there's gonna be a lot of announcements going on. And Nintendo is mindful of this, and if they are relying on the Switch Pro or, or new Nintendo Switch being here in the holiday season, and that being a big push towards that, they'll want it to be on a day where all the talk is about just this new Nintendo Switch. Not a day where the, the you know, the topics range from Breath of the Wild 2, Metroid Prime 4, new Nintendo Switch, whatever Microsoft's going on with, uh, Activision, EA, like all these things going on at E3. I don't wanna say the Switch Pro would be lost in the shuffle, but it certainly would be just part of the shuffle. So Nintendo would look more towards say, I don't know, some random week in July or August if they really are looking to have it for this holiday. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Where's the PlayStation 5 shortage? Are you still looking for a PS5? You just haven't been able to get one because it keeps selling out every time it pops up. Let me know about your experiences with that down below. Also, what about new Pokemon Snap doing very well overall, especially compared to its previous entry back in 1999. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.